the law of supply and demand. Let me explain. The law of supply and demand. What is that actually? In fact, there are two laws at work here. The law of demand and yes, the law of supply. When economists refer to demand, they simply mean how much demand there is for a product or a certain price. For example, how many electric bicycles are bought in the United States if they cost an average of $2,000 and how many if they cost $4,000. And you guessed it, if something is more expensive, fewer people will buy it. A higher price means lower demand. If you stop viewing here, you already know what demand and what the law of demand is. If something is more expensive, fewer people will buy it. For those looking for real added value, there is also something called supply. That is how much of a product is sold for a certain price. The higher the price, the higher the supply, so the more sellers want to sell. For example, if companies know they can get $4,000 for their electric bikes, more will be brought onto the market than if they know they can only get $2,000 for them. Supply and demand therefore work against each other in a sense. If something becomes more expensive, sellers want to sell more, but buyers will want to buy less. So how is the price of something determined? Well, where supply and demand, buyers and sellers meet. That is to say, at the price at which buyers want to buy as much as sellers want to sell. For example, suppose that at a price of $3,000, companies are willing to put 100,000 electric bikes on the market in the United States and Americans are willing to buy 100,000 bicycles at that price, we would say that supply and demand are in equilibrium at that price. At a higher price, say 4,000, companies might want to make 150,000 bikes but they might only be able to sell 50,000 of them, which obviously doesn't make sense. And why is all this useful? Believe me, it's useful to know all this because it allows us to understand why the prices of some things suddenly become much higher or lower. For instance, when important nuclear plants go offline, the price of electricity rises. You have probably already noticed this and now you can explain it too. When important nuclear power plants go offline, we say that the supply of electricity decreases. For every possible price that buyers are willing to pay, less will be sold than before. In fact, buyers still want to use the same amount of electricity, so sellers can charge a higher price ensuring that a more limited amount of electricity goes to the buyers who are willing to pay the most for it. The result is that less is sold than before at a higher price. Or conversely, if we all start driving more electric cars, we will want to buy more electricity. Anyone who has been paying attention knows what that means. That's right, demand will rise. For every possible price that sellers ask, more will be bought than before. Sellers will be only willing to sell more electricity if they can charge a higher price. It's the law of supply and demand, you know. The result is that more is sold than before and at a higher price. So those two laws can explain any price evolution? These laws of supply and demand almost always hold true in real life. However, there are some exceptions. The demand for essential medicines, for instance, will not change much if the price rises. We are more or less willing to pay anything for them. 